Hi. Welcome back today. I'm pleased Appreciate to meet you again. Thank you. We'll your MRI results today and talk okay. a little bit about some of the treatment options that we were discussing the last time you were in. The most important part of our brain is the front part, our frontal lobes. It controls our emotions. Here you can see a model of the brain with the blood vessels on the outside. And what we're doing is looking at the inner part. See the corpus callosum, brainstem, cerebellum. Okay. Here we have the corpus callosum, connects the two halves of the brain. We have the brainstem. So I'm going to get you to take your right index finger and touch my finger, and then touch your nose and touch my finger again. Do that a couple of times. Touch your nose, and back to my finger again, and back to your nose. Good. Now with the other hand, tap, 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 and flip-flop it. That's testing your coordination. I couldn't go upstairs. I'd leave things at the bottom of the stairs and just go up and down once a day. Um, it affected my work because I was a nurse. And, and obviously still am, um, but it affected me being able to work properly. I was falling asleep at work, even driving, driving back from the MS clinic. Um, I was prone to nodding off when I was asleep, when I was driving, um, which that was so um, debilitating at the time. I'm going to take your hand, and now we're going to check the vibration in your fingertip. Do you feel the buzzing there in your fingertip? Yep. The buzzing there. Yep. Good. And there as well. I think the worst thing that I went through was losing my vision. Um, because it was something I'd never experienced before and I never knew when that was going to come back. And the first specialist that I saw said it'd be at least six months, which was devastating. This is your brain MRI from 2012. We have different sequences of your brain. Um, this is a nice side view of your brain here. You can see your, your eyeball there. And then we're going to go across your brain, looking at these white areas, I'm going to show you some of the representative areas. Okay. Uh, what they what they function for. An important area called the corpus callosum. This band of tissue here connects the two halves of the brain. The symptoms of multiple sclerosis really come in two forms. The intermittent symptoms, which affect vision, balance, um, bladder function, and mobility. And those will come on suddenly and last for weeks or months or years. And pe people will partially remit from that or recover from that. The other way symptoms can come on is progressively, where they creep in and they get worse over time. We call that progressive multiple sclerosis. Those symptoms are harder to treat and harder to prevent. If we had a diagnostic test that could predict who's going to develop progressive MS, there's a good chance we could prevent that from occurring. There are a lot of people out there who think that it's more environmental and I feel a sort of vindication <laughs> in the sense that I've always thought genes do have an important role and in this particular case at least we have found the first evidence that this is in fact true. The likelihood of developing multiple sclerosis if you have this mutation is at least 60 to 70 percent, which is unprecedented comparing to the previous genetic factors for multiple sclerosis. So it's, it's quite a high risk and therefore it's probably quite important to start taking measures to mitigate the onset of disease as much as possible.
Um, so if a test was available, for sure all my children would have it, no question. They'd want to know so that they, they can sort of plan their life and what's going to happen to them. I'm just going to put a, a light in your eye for a moment. Okay. And this is to look at the back of your, your eyes. Just look straight ahead, straight ahead. Put the back on the 